Boys Lines. Hans Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold As Lions podcast. Well, welcome once again to the As Bold As Lions podcast. I um, just want to make a small note with a small bit of fanfare here. You are listening to the 100th episode of the As Bold As Lions podcast. Kind of crazy. Um, if I had a, uh, a an audience applause track here, I'd be playing it and I uh, was thinking how I could find that, but that would be really cheesy and, um, and just overdone. But somehow I was thinking, man, I'm getting close to number 100. And as I was editing down um, the last episode, I'm like, oh, it's the next one. So this is number 100, and um, nothing otherwise remarkable about it, but uh, that we're finishing up uh, a series that uh, we started last time on generosity. And um, segueing into that, um, just the second half of this, and probably will be a little shorter than last time as uh, we were setting some of this up, but... This Be Generous series, we are talking about stewardship, we're talking about giving. Um, this time is is more focused less on uh, money and resources and looking at the time that we've been given, the talents, the skills that we um, uh, are, are to use. And this comes in the month of February, of course, in which we would consider it a, a month of love. Um, being Valentine's Day is, is something we, we celebrate this month. But I think as we live with an attitude of generosity, it's because of what Christ has done for us. First um, John 4.19, we love because he first loved us. He first loved us. Um, extrapolating that over, I think we're generous then because he was first generous to us. He was, he was selfless and giving and offering up of himself. So therefore we offer up of ourselves for, for his sake. Um, last time I had some quotes to just, um, to utilize and incorporate into the podcast episode that seemed like they were, in keeping with uh, what what the theme was, going to do that again today. And both of these quotes are um, are kind of saying the same thing, just reworded a little bit differently. But they're kind of a gut punch when you think about them and the application therein for each of them. They're kind of like a good. <laughs> I don't know if there's ever a good sort of gut punch, but. Think of it in, in terms of like, wow, that that's saying a lot in just a few words. This first one is by a man named R.C. Sprawl, a theologian, you may be familiar with him. Um, the worst sin against stewardship is to waste your life. The second one, again, these are both pretty similar, but this one I don't I don't have the uh, the the person to attribute it to, but um, so it's an unknown author, I guess I'd say. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. And the worst sin against stewardship is to waste your life. So talking about here, this idea that we can be given something and then choose not to use it, be lazy, be afraid, be not motivated. I guess that gets into laziness. Something holds us back and we just choose not to use what we've been given. And looking at money last time in this Be Generous series, you'd think like that would be the harder topic of, of kind of this two-pronged attack on generosity. But I think for myself, I do find money always difficult and 
and surrendering that to the Lord. But um, my fear is that I can look at other areas of stewardship without as much priority as I look at money, the big one. That's kind of what I think of when we're talking about stewarding and generosity. It's like, oh, it's giving my money towards something. It's being not greedy and selfish with, with my wallet. And, you know, stewardship is, is more than that. And it, it's, it's just as difficult, I think, to talk about what you've been given in terms of just your own innate wiring and your gifts and the way that that can be expressed and used for kingdom work and kingdom building. Um, and this, this whole topic is just a really beyond in kind of putting it into a box like I'm trying to as much. It's, it's really just everything, how everything that we've been given by the Lord is, is then entrusted to us and used well. And last time, most of the points were just kind of, I hate to use the term cherry pick, but there's, there's certain points that a, a verse was used to reflect that point. And, um, there was one parable that I think was mentioned, which was, was really tied into the, the last point. But today, um, talking about talents, you can probably already kind of know where that's going. If I'm going to the Bible to, to support some things and, um, it's, it's a parable of the talents talking about Matthew 25, 14 through 30, which I meant to have my Bible already because I'm going to uh, read this here. But um, as I flip to that, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a story, it's a parable that Jesus tells, and it really gets into this idea of using what we have for, for the kingdom and, and realizing that we are given different things to invest and to use. And then we're, we're called to be obedient with those. We're called to, to give those back to the Lord. You can probably hear me flipping my pages. These are the the little things that I need to set up beforehand so that I'm ready to, before I hit record. But uh, Matthew 25 uh, verses 14 through 30, and I'm almost there. The parable of the talents. I'm reading from the ESV most of the time when you hear me read a passage, read a verse. It is from this translation. It's, I guess it's just the one that I've been in for quite a while and if I found, um, found the most, uh, I don't know, it, it seems to be the, the most readable for me. I, I know it's a little bit more, um, uh, some of the language is a little bit more, um, man, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm losing, I'm not good at finding words on my feet today, but it's a little bit more of a literal translation. So sometimes the wording is, is not common as common everyday language. Um, kind of going down a rabbit hole here, but ESV, I do like, um, NIV as well, which is a little bit more readable, um, as opposed to even going further with like new living translation and things like that, which, um, you may find yourself in any of those um, types of, of translations. They're all good. But anyway, um, Matthew 25, 14 through 30, I used that time to, to find myself here. And I know it's a little bit longer, but I want to read it all so that we can have this as our, our context today. Um, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So so also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But the one who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. That's important, this last servant. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents here. I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. 
And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of of teeth. That's, um, and I want to be careful, I said, the word cherry pick with uh, with verses, and that, that is in no means the way I, I like to go through. I um, in each point um, last time, and especially today, these are these are really put together with what um, I believe the Bible is saying to us on each of these things. So, probably not the word I would want to use, but I hope you understand, um, especially today as we're going into this passage, uh, we are directly taking what. Uh, the Bible is saying and and using it for each of these discussions. So parable of the talents, just read that Matthew 25. The, um, I think for certain the story can be taken at face value. And indeed the word talent does translate as money in the immediate context. But as Jesus outlines this parable, it's clear that a return of some sort is expected upon this investment into the lives of these three men, these, these servants, the master being, being Jesus, being the Lord and us being the servants, those that are entrusted with what we are, we've been given. Um, so some questions, is that investment just about a financial return or is it broader than that? Could it be the things invested in our lives are expected to bring about some type of return for the kingdom of God? And I think you already hear my heart here. I, I believe, yes, it is so. We are called to display our gifts in a way that honors the Lord. We're also called to glorify him with the use of our time. In all of this, what we are given is not for our own use or our own personal gain. It is ultimately all for God. We talked about that last time. It's all the Lord's. As we'll see today, the stakes are high, but the rewards are even greater. So let's not hide under a bushel basket uh, what we've been given. Continuing on, this is the second episode again of the series. We have some rapid fire points once again. That's my uh, that's my mo is to to do some rapid fire uh, types of. Um, discussions. So our first point, as we dive right in, as we're looking at this uh, parable as our context, it is this. The Bible rewards stewardship, but punishes laziness. Verses 26 and 27, the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. I think that's a different version than the ESV, but um, same same idea anyway. It seems nowhere in, in the rest of the Bible is this reward punishment uh, dynamic more obvious than in in Matthew twenty five in this parable. Each servant's given the opportunity to do something with the talent. He's 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 giving them this money to say. Um, bring a return on this. And for those who invest the money, they make more, they turn around, double it. Um, He's pleased with them. And he even multiplies what, what, what they have. He says that the one is is given the money from the, the lazy servant at the end. But the one who does nothing, who just said, I, I just stuck it in the ground and, and just, dug a hole for it because I didn't want to lose it. You know, I wanted to make sure you, you got back what, what 
you gave me and kind of no more. He is scolded. He is rebuked. And the master's displeasure is obvious. And he's, he's even taking this guy and setting him apart from the other two servants. So this harshness should serve as a warning for us. There will be a reckoning and there will be an account given for how uh, we have managed what has been given to us, what we have done with the time and the talents we've been given. So do we seek God's favor in this matter or do we seek his chastisement? I think that's a pretty easy one to answer, but how we actually live it out and how we apply uh, this may may give us a different answer of how we're actually living with what we've been given. So that first point, Bible rewards punishment, uh, rewards stewardship punishes laziness. Secondly, wasted gifts equal wasted opportunities. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. Someone skilled in their work, they will be, it's almost like they will, they'll be promoted. It's sad, and I think we could probably imagine someone in our own lives that we've seen uh, been given great talent, great just natural ability, but just not operating in that gifting. And it's a shame because I think we realize, man, what, what could have been done if they had just been faithful to to operate in that, to do that, you know, to do something with what they're given. Um, we have so many distractions today. We have so many opportunities to say, oh, just let somebody else do it. You know, just let them take this on. I'm, I don't want to do it. I don't want, that sounds like work. That sounds like a, something difficult. But we have to realize that our unique skill set is needed today. And what you are skilled in needs to be exercised, even if it's a gift that just comes naturally, even if you're just like, oh, that doesn't seem like any big deal. That's that's something I, you know, isn't doesn't come that hard to me anyways. Well, duh, that's, <laughs> that's why it needs to be, you need to do something with it. To hone that, develop it, and allow God to give you opportunities to operate in it for his glory. Um to have the skilled hands of a surgeon or to, to be able to craft melodies into beautiful songs, to engineer something, to, to create uh, complex architecture. Those are just some, some things I'm throwing out there, but you know, there's more we can come up with. But for those that do these things and, and beyond there, they're hardwired into us and every person has something that they can offer to the Lord. It's our God-given giftings that are a way to bring glory to the Lord. But this only happens when we do something with that, with what we've been given. So my charge is to not waste your gift. Third point today, the body of Christ is one primary benefactor of your talent. Romans 12, 4 and 5, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many, are one body in Christ, and every every one uh, member is one of another. Paul is describing this body of Christ. He's talking about hands and feet, eyes and ears, and I think that's um, pertinent to this discussion. We all operate in different areas, but each part supports and upholds the overall mission, and that's building the body of Christ to the glory of God. And the body only functions when when all these parts are working together. We have these examples from Exodus talking about the craftsmen who were involved with uh, making various aspects of um, uh, woodworking and, and, uh, and gold refining, things like that. Talking in Exodus 36, 1 and 2, these men are gifted. It says, the Lord has gifted Bezalel, Ohol, Oholiab, boy, I'm... I'm I'm tripping over those names, but we'll call uh, uh, Bezalel and Ohaliab um, and other skilled craftsmen. He's gifted them with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in building the sanctuary. So these men are, are put into positions where they can be used. They can do the tasks that, that God has 
um, has has put before Moses, put before the Israelites to to finish the, these um, these things and to furnish them. And if someone, if we just bring this into our, our modern day, um, our lives, to, to, to say someone is to fail to respond to that call of the Lord, I, I believe God raises up someone else. He'll find someone else who, who can do that. But why miss out on that, that opportunity, that, that really the greatest opportunity known to any of us to, to be part of building the kingdom on earth? So the body of Christ is going to benefit and ultimately glory is going to go to the Lord by you operating and using your gifts for him. Fourth point is that time is short. Don't put off till tomorrow what needs to be done today. Ephesians five fifteen through 16. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. It should be a familiar verse if you've listened to the podcast because it's the theme verse for As Bold as Lions. But perhaps you've never thought about it in terms of stewardship. We make the most of every opportunity. We make the most of our time. See, for me, and I think for so many of us, it's easy to just fall into the, the cyclical patterns and rhythms of life, the, the calendars, the schedules, the, the, um, the just the normal cadence of life that we go through daily and weekly, monthly, yearly. And I, I know that these bring a source of stability for, for many of us and in a lot of ways just sanity for, for us to just continue to be operating and, and doing what we need to do. But we have to realize going from year to year in our lives that we've been really given this short window of time to tell others about Jesus. We've really just been given just just these few days, years. And that's so much of what this discussion on stewardship and generosity centers upon. Is how are you going to use the time that you've been given? Giving, giving of ourselves so that Christ can be seen in us. How do, we, how do we put everything secondary to that? Tomorrow's not promised. Yesterday's gone. We just have this moment right now. And day to day, are we, are we helping people see the Lord? Are we creating on-ramps for them to be able to, to, to move forward seeing Him in our lives? Or are we so fixated on our to-do list that building the kingdom becomes kind of this afterthought, something that we'll get around to it if, if we've got time? You know, maybe later on, maybe when I'm retired, maybe when life slows down, maybe... You know, after the kids are grown up, whatever. It's really a mindset that we have to get in, into that we say, I, I don't have tomorrow. I don't have 15, 20 years from now. At least I can't live like I, uh, I know that's a certainty because I can't. And free time is never just going to happen. It's never just going to fall into my lap where it's like, oh, now I have time to work on this. So we have to be intentional about making Christ known in every aspect. If that's in our homes while our kids are young and growing up, if it's in school as we're going to school, um, whether high school, secondary education, college, everything, our jobs into the marketplace, being intentional about making Christ known because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Just bringing him, bringing him into conversations, bringing him into our interactions with others, and just seeing what happens. Let the Holy Spirit lead out of those things and see where it goes. Final point today, and again, we've we've hit a lot of things. The Bible uh, rewards stewardship, punishes laziness. Wasted gifts equal wasted opportunities. The body of Christ is a, a primary benefactor of your talents. Time is short. Use um, use it wisely. Don't put off till tomorrow what you could do today. That's a recap. Uh, our last point is giving of our time generously is a mark of Christian maturity. 
Psalm 90, verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. As we grow in Christ, we see that our time is not this possession that we have to kind of hoard and, and hold on to, kind of like money. We, we grow it in a way that we're able to give it away and be generous. We see it as a gift that we're given. And I'm in this process daily as I think about what is it I want to accomplish in the next 24 hours versus what is it that God wants me to do in this time. And there's moments where God just interrupts all my plans. He interrupts my day. And then I just have to decide, do I keep kind of pushing through with the agenda I, I have and what I was expecting to get done and accomplished, or do I lay that all aside and submit and surrender to, to what he's clearly looking at, um, putting before me. I, I have to be honest, full transparency. I'm not there yet. And I look to a lot of other more mature, older believers that have shown me what patience looks like, what selflessness looks like. And to say, I want to be like that someday. I want to, I want to be like that now, but I know it's a process and it's a, it's a offering of myself to the Lord to say, God, continue to refine me and chip away all of the, the stuff that, that gets in the way of doing that. I want to have a heart that beats for the Lord. And I know that as we, as we set that up in our minds, that that means we're going to be tested in the areas of our, our time management. We're going to be put in points where like, I had all these things I wanted to get done, but God is just calling me right now to pray with somebody. God's calling me right now to, to just listen. God's calling me right now to put away the agenda that I have and clear my schedule for the next few hours so I can just sit at his feet, sit at his feet with somebody else. There's a lot of times where we just have to allow him to break through and allow his his agenda to, to supersede ours. And that will be moments to, to put him on display, to give him the glory. And our timetables take a back seat. But as we do that, as we shift in that way, we're, we're given a front row view to see what God's doing. It's like God's saying, here, I want you to see this. I want you to be a part of this. I don't want you to be so busy that you miss what I'm doing right here because this is important. And as we understand his heart, we long to give our time away freely and openly. We long to just be of use and of service to him. Think of Mary and Martha. We want to have that Mary-like spirit that just says, I want to linger here. I don't want to be so busy doing God that I miss what you're trying to do. Whew. Guys, I hope these last couple of weeks have been just, again, some time to do that self-evaluation. That's hard. I I don't like to necessarily be a convicting type of person, but I know that the truth of God's word comes with conviction. And it's something that before I'm saying it to anyone else, I'm, I've got like the mirror in front of me and I'm just talking to myself and saying, I need to work on this. I need to do this better. I need to invite the Lord into my day more and, and allow him to rearrange my priorities. We, we can read these thoughts. We can dig into God's word. We get a clear picture of what he is tasking us with as stewards. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to, to do that heart work and do some of that convicting because he's gentle. He's not going to force his way in, but he's going to make it clear. Like this is where you're not giving yourself fully to me. This is, I want that. I want you to surrender that. And it's a daily struggle to not hoard and try to obtain more, more money, more time, more stuff. I need to give up this starts with me, ends with me attitude and just say, God, what, what do you want? I'll take it. I, I don't want what I, what I want, what I can achieve, what I can accomplish. And so this just becomes kind of a light bulb moment in our lives where we see our resources, we see what we've been given, we see stewardship in the light of what biblically um, has been given to us. 
Closing this once again, I just want to read from Matthew six nineteen through 21. As Matthew talks about this, Jesus talks about this, and what we, um, what we kind of put our hope in and what we, we look towards. He says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. How do these words of, of Christ apply as we end this discussion? Well, they point us to live differently. They point us to think differently and act differently than the world does about time and about money and resources. Our kingdom is not on this earth. It's in heaven. So my challenge in this Be Generous series is to go back, pray over how God would have you respond in all this. What is he asking of you in terms of stewarding your money, your resources, your time, your talents? What is looking, uh, living, excuse me, living generously look like for you? In a lot of ways, our first episode of this year, which was titled By the Field, if you haven't listened to that, I encourage you to go back to, was a look into this topic and just these episodes are kind of an expansion on that in some more practical ways. If we are investing into the future, if we're buying the field, how do we do that with an attitude of generosity and an attitude of open handedness? God bless you guys. Love walking this journey with you. Please reach out if you want to discuss this further, or any other topic. Um, if you have prayer needs, any concerns, I'd love to love to connect. You can reach me at info at DerekCharlesJohnson.com. Hey, just a quick note. I uh, just wanted to insert this after doing some editing at the end. I didn't make mention that uh, we won't have a new episode until the first week of March after uh, this one posts. So just in case you're looking for something, um, we're taking a week off and then we'll pick up again in March, the first week. Uh, hope that makes sense. Thank you. Once again, leaving with our theme verse, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. I'm going to read it again, twice in one episode. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Take care. God bless. Hey, guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share. And head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.